Ahoy there, traders. Thank you for uh, turning up on a, a Friday morning. As always, it's, um, it's greatly appreciated that you've decided to take a moment out of your day uh, and spend it with me. Um, it is uh, going to be an interesting session today. What we're going to be looking at is how do we find, again, this is the common theme of the last uh, several weeks, but we're going to be looking at how do we find stock super fast? I keep getting asked the same question, uh, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. It was the same question I had when I started out. Okay, how do we find stocks that make sense today? Because the majority of the textbooks, the majority of training courses, the majority of programs, they focus on after the fact. After the fact, this is what the perfect example of the author is trying to illustrate. This is what it should look like. But then at no point in any of these monstrosity uh, uh, thousand page tombs of books uh, do they say, OK, now this is how we go and find them before it gets to that point, because we don't want the trade after the fact. <laughs> we want it before. So that's what we're going to look at. We're going to uh, look at our footprint again and we're going to go and find stuff to trade. So it looks like we've got a full house. I can see everyone's still logging in. Just pop a comment in the chat box. Say hello. Um, I'm very open and accessible to questions along the way. Um, so if you've got questions, comments, as always, pop them in there. Hey, Craig, how you doing? Hey, Michael, Peter, Rodrigo, hello, Ruben, Scott, Trevor. No Ezekiel this week, uh, bottom of the list, no Zeke. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> Maybe you'll see this on the recording. So uh, for those of you who are new, there's one or two new names. Uh, the way that these sessions go is we'll have a little look at the markets. We'll spend 20, 30 minutes. We're going to pretty much spend all of the session looking at uh, the charts and the markets and finding things. Um, but uh, we'll be looking at a, a few things uh, when it comes to the markets. Uh, personally, I'm finding them frustrating. So I'll show you why I'm finding them frustrating. So we'll take a look at that. And then we're going to be looking at finding stocks super fast. So if you are new, uh, I'm not a Wall Street guru. Uh, I have not worked in the city. I'm just one of these guys that has uh, cracked the code. I'm very fortunate to have figured it out on my own. Uh, certainly looking back on a 27 year career now, it seems scary saying that. <laughs> but uh, looking back on a, on a lifelong uh, journey of trading the markets and uh, most of that full time. And uh, you know, I figured a few things out. I figured a few things out on my own but that's a rarity and that is an anomaly. And I can only say that because I did it. And then I'm looking at people who have helped along the way, people who have tried to make this trading thing work, whatever the style is, whether it's day trading, swing trading, investing. So many people fail at this because they're trying to figure it out on their own. And looking back on all the people that I've spoken to over the years, all the industry professionals, the fund managers, the hedge funds, the institutions, the retail traders, the aspiring traders, the one commonality is the ones who try and do it on their own, they inevitably don't make it because they're trying to figure it out on their own. And again, this is why I can quite confidently say I am an anomaly. Like I appreciate that like not everyone does it. Some people do, most people don't. So just keep that in mind. And you can get help from a variety of different places these days. When I started out, it was the 90s. Um, there, there was no one to ask as far as I was concerned. Like no one I knew, uh, sorry, the one person I knew that did it wouldn't help me. So I had to quite literally figure it out on my own. Today, you're spoiled for choice. You can uh, hire people to help you. You can go to YouTube. Uh, there's all sorts of um, resources and free resources and trainings out there. So you are spoiled for choice. And that in and of itself is a problem. So best way to think about this is if you're trying to crack the code for yourself, is what are you trying to do? Start with the end in mind and think about, okay, imagine that you are successful at trading and what does it look like for you? Because I, because this is what I did and I didn't realize that it was genius at the time, but what I figured out is like, what don't I want to do? And when I first started out, I thought, okay, I want to get paid every day is what I want to do. Okay, so I'm day trading. I'm not swing trading. I'm not investing. I don't want to wait months, years I've got bills to pay. And quite literally, in my case, I was um, I went full time uh, after being diagnosed with Crohn's disease. I was housebound for three years, I, just like everyone else. I had bills to pay back then and I had to make it work. I had to uh, make profits every day or oh, that that was the pressure I put on myself. So that was my choice. Okay, so in my case, I'm day trading. Um, what's the best market to trade? I'm not falling into that trap of like, 
the shiny object of listening to the the guru i guess i suppose it's ironic me saying this but i wasn't falling into the trap of listening to whatever guru was saying oh forex is the best market oh this is the best market and that's the best market like you've got to figure that out for yourself you've got to determine okay what's the best thing for you for your criteria i want to get paid regularly every day i want to trade the markets that are the most moving the most profitable i was going to be well there's the clue moving um, so i'm going to be trend trading i was trend trading and breakout trading was my style it still is to this day and um, that's what i'm looking for now someone else might say well i want to get paid every day but i don't want to trade trends i want to trade stocks that don't go anywhere so maybe you want to take a premium selling approach that is very short-term focused, maybe one to two days. You know, that's the same objective, get paid today. But if you're not a trend trader, if you don't want to trade breakouts, well, maybe you can sell options and sell premium and collect an income that way every day. But it meets the same objective. But what we're trying to describe is think about what you want from trading. Like, what does it look like? What does that trading success look like for you? And then you can work backwards. A big part of this, and this is why I spend a lot of time talking about uh, uh, styles and strategies and what I do and all the rest of it, is to help you determine, like, what's the right thing for you? Because, I mean, I spoke to a, a, a lady earlier in the week, and they were looking for something that I don't provide. So, like, what I do is not right for you. And that's okay. That's a great decision. You're now one step closer to your perfect trading style. So, I'm just spending a moment talking about that. Like you want a style of trading that suits what you want from trading. And profit is not the objective here. Profit is a byproduct of process. Uh, a, a very simple illustration, and then I will move on, um, is if you've not got time to day trade, there is zero point in you learning how to day trade. There is no benefit to you whatsoever if you can't do it, not from a, a practical point of view, but just physically. Like You've got other things to do during the day, the day job, you've got kids, you've got family, you've got errands to run, whatever. There is no point in you doing it whatsoever. So that excludes all the people who are trying to teach you how to day trade, either for free or for paid programs or whatever. Like just, just pop a comment in the box, folks. I wasn't planning on talking about that, riffing on this, but does that make sense? Does that help you give you maybe just a little bit of clarity over what's right for you? What's the direction that you should go in? I'm not naive enough to think that my way is the only way, it's the best way and all that. You know, it, it's, a, it's a journey, <laughs> not a destination. Awesome, awesome, folks. Thanks for all your comments. Uh, anyway, anyway, um, uh, for those of you who, who are new and wondering who this guy that's riffing weirdly on finding your own journey, I'm just a regular guy. Uh, as you can probably gather, I generally want you to succeed with your journey. And um, if it runs parallel to mine, I'll help you along the way. And um, if it doesn't, I'll always point you off in the right direction. That's really the message that I have uh, I've had over many decades when I'm trying to help traders. Uh, I'm a little bit goofy. I'm a little bit weird. That's not a real mustache. That's one of those fancy filters. <laughs> I did try growing uh, a beard recently, uh, and it was nowhere near that. I don't think I could grow a beard to save my life. Anyway, I've been doing this a while. Uh, lockdown's clearly bothering me. Um, but nonetheless, uh, we've got uh, many decades of experience in trading the markets. I've traded a variety of different styles. I've managed hedge funds. Uh, I've helped hedge fund traders uh, become better traders. Uh, again, not the first time that I've been doing this is all I'm trying to say. So with that said, let's get into finding stocks super fast and see if we can uh, find something interesting. Um, before we do that, just a moment, uh, the structure that I use, uh, I refer to what I do as a production line trading. Um, I, like I want to know what I'm doing, when I'm doing, why I'm doing. When I first start out, like most people, there's a lot of blanks in what we do. Um, discretionary trading it might be a, a phrase that you've heard. And what that means is you've got to interpret what's going on. Now, over the years, what you can do is you can systematize decisions. It might be called an algorithm. It might be called a production line, which is what I do. Uh, it's a systematic approach to find, filter, and sort stocks. And all it is is a decision tree. That's really what I'm talking about. If this, then that. I'm trying to boil all my decisions down to yes, no decisions. We can call that an algorithm. Technically, what I do, it's still discretionary training. There's still a viewpoint involved. But when you can define everything that could be done that you like doing, and we're going to look at this in a moment, then you've got an algorithm, you've got a system, you've got 
Again, I refer to it as a production line. I'm looking to quality control my production line in trading. And to do that, I need to define everything so that I can say, has this happened? Yes or no? Has this happened? Yes or no? And when there's a no, it's you, it's quality control. You know, flick it off the production line, put it in the reject pile. Um, maybe we can recycle it and come back later and put it back across the production lines. That's what we're doing. So the, so the, the overarching principle I look through uh, and try and find opportunities is the, the first step. I want a mechanical reason to take a big list of stocks. The universe of stocks in the US market is 28 bajillion stocks, whatever the ridiculous number is. It's a lot of stocks. And we don't want to look at every stock every day all of the time. It's a waste of my time, it's a waste of your time, it's a waste of everyone's time. And that creates uncertainty at the very first hurdle. So what I want is a mechanical reason to be looking at the charts. And it could be at the early stage of training, it could be reasonably simple. It could be, I heard a McDonald's advert on the radio and that sparked your interest to go and look at the McDonald's stock. You know, and if that's where you're at at your trading journey, that's good enough. It's a mechanical reason. I keep hearing McDonald's advert. You know, maybe I'll go and check out the stock and see what's going on there. You know, and it just creates that interest. And then you'll start to, well, how do I find more stocks like that on a regular basis? And that's what we're going to look at in a moment. How do we find opportunities that meet our expectations? Now, the next step is the bit that everyone forgets or doesn't do. If you're expecting to see something in, uh, for example, a trend, we're going to look at this in detail in a moment. If you're expecting to see a trending chart because of your mechanical scans or a insert your condition here, I'm expecting to see the thing, the, the, the condition. We're going to look at trending stocks. Well, visually, you want to confirm that it's doing what you expect. And it seems so blatantly obvious to do that but everyone I speak to doesn't do this. Like the majority of new traders don't confirm their expectations. They're using tools or widgets or indicators. They're doing the mechanical step. They're looking for that, <clears throat> dare I say it, signal generator. But it's mo there's more to it than that. But we can systematize the decisions. I'm looking for a trend. Is it trending? You know, <laughs> there's, that, there's that question, yes or no. And if it if there's a question mark against, well, it could be maybe if I close my eye and just kind of squint to the left slightly, maybe like move on. The most difficult thing for newer traders to do, or to be fair, any trader for any experience is to stop wasting time looking for a trading opportunity. Now, what I'm what I want, the, the, the reaction I'm looking for is there's the trade right there. There it is. If, I've, if I'm asking the question of where's the trade, it's not there. Like, where is it? Another variation of that, for, especially for traders at the new end of the spectrum, is how now that I'm looking at this chart, how do I trade it? If you don't know how you're planning on trading, then you've not got a robust system or the trade that you're looking for isn't there. And then when it is, I'm going to look for an entry opportunity, trade the next pullback. I've got nine different variations of the pattern that I like to use. And you can insert your own flavor here, but we just want a consistent meth methodical process to place an entry, to manage our risk and set targets. And that brings us on to the, the, the final step of trade management. When we're in the trade, what's going to happen? If it goes up, where are we going to take a target? If it goes down, uh, what are we going to exit? And uh, if it's taken too long, takes too much time, then maybe we want to reevaluate. So this is the, the TTE management timeout, target out, exit out. I've got management rules to define all of these decisions so that I know what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, why I'm doing it before, during, and after the trade. That's the experience that I'm looking for. That's what I'm referring to as the production line. So I'm trying to fit everything into uh, a very definitive criteria. We're going to focus on the mechanical assessment and the visual confirmation today uh, to try and find uh, potentially great candidates for some explosive opportunities. So with that said, let's go look at the charts. For all our longtime uh, viewers and uh, everyone who's riding along with these weekly sessions, firstly, thank you for keep coming back every week. I really appreciate it. Um, but you'll recognize this. This is uh, Twitter. Now, this is uh, just one of the footprints that we look for. One, this is only one of the things we've had. There's actually, um, 
there's three directions. It can go up, it can go down, it can go sideways. So we've got one footprint is an uptrend, a second footprint is a downtrend. And then when prices range in, there's actually four things that we can do, four things. We can wait for the breakouts, up or down, or we can trade the reversals off the range high, off the range low. We can actually trade ranges if we want to, or wait for breakouts. So we've got four things. So there's actually six patterns, six basic directions uh, and footprints that we can look for as a mechanical scan. Again, we're just going to look at one of them, uh, and that is if price is trending. And we've gone through this uh, a few times in the past, but uh, so I'm going to go through what I'm looking for very quickly, and then we're going to go and look for it. I'm going to focus on stocks uh, that are at the, a lower price range, uh, this time for a change. And I'm going to look at stocks that may have uh, a $10 to $30 price point. No particular reason. I just want to illustrate that it's not exclusive to $100 stocks, which is what I'm normally looking for when I'm doing this uh, walkthrough. So we can find some lower priced opportunities is all I'm trying to get to. So the first thing that we are want is we want to find uh, the average prices are crossed over. So this is a mechanical footprint. Again, I'm going to be focusing on stocks that might fall into this category here. So I'm going to evaluate this section of the charts. Now, equally, we could evaluate that section, that section. And right now, we actually have a live uh, uh, opportunity that may be unfolding on Twitter right now because it meets the same footprints. What we're looking for is buy the um, Samuel L. Jackson dip. Insert your own expletive. <laughs> I'm censoring myself this week. Um, so BTFD, all we're doing is defining, firstly, what a trend is. And when we know that, that means that we can uh, look for a dip, a retracement, a correction is another way of saying it. And then we're looking for, uh, for other stocks that might meet that criteria. So all I'm doing for the moment is I'm defining what I'm looking for in a trend. And I'm going to look for this, this uh, box that I'm just outlining here. I'm looking for stocks in that early stage trend. It's relatively new. So I'm going to look for the average prices crossing over. I'm going to be looking for a price to be having the average prices have crossed over for about 40 trading days. So maybe two months. So it's not, it's not brand new. It's not just crossed over, but the uh, it, it's been there a while. And that should help filter uh, what most people might interpret as false alerts or false signals. And that's what we'll aim to do. Uh, the next thing that we want to do, uh, so that's number two. The number three is we want to actually see, is it moving up? And this is, again, all of this is done in a mechanical scan. I'm going to do it all here on the left in the watch list at the moment. I'm just showing you what the end result is first, and then we'll go and scan for it. So one, two, three, average price has crossed over. From a time point of view, it's 40 days minimum. And we want to see that the stock is actually moving. So the average prices can be crossed over, but we also want to know, like, is price actually moving? So I'm going to look back, if you like, and say in the last 60, in the last 90 days, you know, number doesn't matter. Let's just say the last 60 days, it is actually up in the last 60 days. And then number, uh, where are we up to? Number four. Now, this is the important part. The important part is number, let me change colors. Number four is these yellow boxes. We're then going to look for a downward movement in the context of what we've identified as a trend, because we've got the average prices crossed over. It's been in a trend for 40 days. It's actually been going up over the last 60 to 90 days. So in the last 10 days, this in these yellow boxes, uh, the, the fourth and final step is, has price retraced? And we can define that in a few ways. We can say it's down 10% in 10 days. 10% in 10 days is, is one thing. Uh, we can also look for, is price below the moving averages? Is it below the 20 period? Is it below the 50 period uh, moving average? Um, and we can define that as it's retraced deeply enough. And you can see the times here where in uh, the subsequent four yellow boxes where it's done that. It's gone below the 20, it's gone below the 50, 
great. Uh, and then it re when it resumes, we want to participate in that trade. Again, same thing here, the third yellow box, we've got price retracing, it goes below the 20, then eventually below the 50, and then it starts to turn around. Now, this is what we've got right now. We've got this yellow box here, the last one, the right one on the chart. It went below the 20. And now in the last you know few days, it's just gone below the 50 period moving average. So it, it's meeting that criteria of dipping in an uptrend. Now, let me just pause there. Does everyone understand the concept? This is the end results. We're going to look for those stocks in... Um, kind of the, the, this first section that we focused on, but we could equally find stocks in any of the other areas if we've got a more established trend. So just pop a, a yes in the chat box. Yes, we get it, Phil. Yes, yes, yes. Just let me know that we're all on the same page. Awesome. Thank you very much for your feedback, folks. Thanks, Terry. Thanks, Craig. Thanks, Ruben. Awesome, Rodrigo. Great to see you here. I missed you the other day. <laughs> you, you weren't in our live session. <laughs> I think you came in near the end of the session uh, in the week, didn't you, Rodrigo? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Right, so uh, the day job does get in the way sometimes, doesn't it, Rodrigo? <laughs> so that's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. Now, the good news is we don't need to look at every stock every day. Uh, so I've got a little universe of stocks here. Um, I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna go down to these. Now I've already got my little universe of stocks. Now these are stocks that are uh, under, not all of them are, but most of them are under 50 or so dollars. Some of them are above because when I originally did this list a couple of months ago, I'm in the process of um, rebuilding my universe. But I've got about 150, 200 stocks that are or were below about $50. Some of them are going to be a little bit above. Some are going to be a little bit of blow. Um, but they're just stocks that are lower uh, value. doesn't mean that they're cheap. It just means that they're at the lower price point. So I'm going to focus my attention on, again, how many stocks we've got? There's only about 200. So what creates this universe is uh, stocks that have about a million shares on average traded. And they're between, uh, in this case, about $20 to $30. And they've got weekly options because I typically plan on trading stocks with weekly options. You could include the monthly option stocks. That's okay. Um, but I'm look, this little subsection of my uh, universe of stocks, it's just I'm looking to do certain things with them. And I need weekly options to do that again. We're talking more about the entry criteria and the strategy of how I'm looking for it. Um, but it, basically, that, that's why it's a little bit more restrictive. Uh, nonetheless, we're going to be fishing in a universe. So stocks that have uh, options in my case. They've got an average of a million shares traded on a regular basis, and they're uh, between about $20 and $50. So that gives me about 200 stocks to play with. So that's what's dictating uh, that universe uh, here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to scan for the stocks. The first thing is we're going to look for stocks that are in a bullish state. So over here, this column that's got that little white arrow right there, that column there, this is a, a custom tool. Uh, I, uh, the only reason why it's custom is I've got it so that it's color coordinated. Most platforms will scan for uh, what's called a golden cross. So I'm looking for the 50 period to be above the 200. I just, I'm, I'm more of a visual person than a number person. And um, so I'm looking uh, just to see, is there is there a blue box? Great. The average prices are crossed over. Now you saw what I did there. I, I just double clicked like it was a spreadsheet. That's all I did. Double click like it was a spreadsheet. So I can scroll down and I'm just going to put a little break in just like I would do with the spreadsheets. You're just going to put a very obvious and clear gap. So now all of these stocks here, these are the only ones that are in a bullish state. So that's that number one criteria done. The second criteria is it needs to be in a trend or that bullish state for about 40 days. So the next column is, has it been in that trend for 40 days? Now, I give this tool to all of my students. That's, again, this is custom build. It's easy to code. 
Um, I would imagine that most charting softwares have some variation of this. Again, for my purpose, I just got my um, uh, my coder guy to kind of whip something up. It didn't take too long, but nonetheless, well, from his point of view, it didn't take too long from my point of view. I was years looking for a guy to code this stuff up. Um, but I'm looking for that. Has it been in trend for 40 days? DIT, days in trend. So I'm just going to sort from high to low. And again, scroll back down to the bottom. Uh, there's not that many stocks that are not in trend. So let's just use 40 days, which is what we're looking for. So all of these stocks now have been in a trend for 40 days. Now, I also want to just look for stocks that are in that kind of 40 uh, 40 to 60 day. I'm looking for that early stage trend. So what I could do is exclude everything that is in uh, or in it or has been in a trend for let's just say 100 days or more because they're going to be a more established trend um, on that part of the chart. So let's do that. Let's resort and let's exclude. So I just sorted them from uh, low to high this time. I'm going to exclude all the stocks that are or have been um, in a trend for uh, 100 days or more. So let's just put a very obvious break there. So these are all more established. So that this list of stocks here, they've all been in a trending state from the average prices point of view for at least 100 days. So that's uh, this right hand side of the, you know, if we divide the chart in two, that's stocks that have been trending for a long period of time. Great. Now I now I know that I'm focusing my attention on stocks at this early stage trend. So let me scroll up. Right, so that gives me, it doesn't give me many, but now I've taken that list of stocks from uh, about 250, 300 to, uh, what have we got there? We've got about 40 stocks. So it's not, it's manageable is the point. So these are all bullish trending stocks. Let's go through it one more time. These are all bullish trending stocks, number one. Number two, they've been in a trend for at least 40 days. And then number three, I can look for, like, is it actually, or have they been moving? And they're up about 25% minimum in the last, say, 60 days. So this column here on the, the right that you can just see in the watch list, that's going to be, it's telling me, it's looking back over the last 60 days, is this stock up? Now, just eyeballing down, I can see that with the exception of uh, one of them, which is 18%, everything's up varying degrees of at least 25%. So I can see that all of those 50 stocks, they're meeting that last criteria. They're up, they're, they're moving up uh, is all we need. Now, I can do all of this, as, you, as you're seeing, without having to look at the chart. But even if I was to look at the chart at this stage, there's only 40 stocks for me to look at. It's not time intensive if I decide to stop the process there. I could go and look at 40 stocks. These are all the ones that make the most sense to evaluate, but I can take it further. I can, well, let me just tidy up again. So we've done average price, we've done trend we've done uh, actually moving so we can do this last part now this is where we really want to get involved in that um, first yellow box is it moving down in the last 10 days another version of the same scan is is it below because it might not be down it might be down nine percent but below the 20 or below the 50 period moving average so I can, I can do that two ways so i can do two versions of the same thing is it retracing in an uptrend and I can use these columns. So I've got the, uh, again, just looking back over the watch list. So going from right to left, we've got uh, bullish there, the, the, the one of the column, let me just highlight it easier. That column now that's with a, with the highlighted backgrounds, that column's there is basically just looking at what, where's price in relation to the moving average. In this case, it's looking at the 200 period moving average. So we can see that all of these stocks here they're above, oops, above the 200 period moving average. Great, that's what I want. The middle column, the middle column is looking for, are these stocks above or below the 50 period moving average? And then the left column the, uh, the, with the, bull, uh, the red and the blue boxes is saying, is it below uh, or above 
the 20 period moving average. So all of these stocks, they're, they're in an uptrend, they're all above the 200, which is great. So I can essentially resort and categorize them again so that they're all kind of in order for me. And again, you see how quick this gets done. It takes longer to explain than to actually do. But now what I've got is those same 40 stocks. Because again, I've only sorted the 40, 40 stocks. The same 40 stocks now. This top section here, they're kind of before that yellow box. They're crossed up. They've been in a trend for 40 days or more. They're going up in an uptrend. So we can quite easily say that they're probably rallying in an uptrend, but they're not below the 20 or below the 50 period moving average. So this next section, they are below the 20. And then this bottom section, there's a three or four, they are um, below the 20 and below the 50 period moving average. So I've got all of those stocks in the various states that might make interesting or might be interesting. I could do the same thing or a similar thing as I mentioned by looking at this column here that I'm just, uh, I don't know why I decided to do that, but let me just highlight it. This column here, th this is a built-in tool uh, to TradeStation. Okay, cheers, Trevor. It'll be recorded. Um, I don't know if you've left already. Trevor's just got to go to work. It'll be recorded. I'll pop it in the, uh, the, the Slack group when we're done. It should be processed later today. So this column uh, here is showing me what did the stock do in the last 10 days. So it's going to look back at the, uh, the closing price 10 days ago, and it's going to compare where the price is right now. So these top stocks here in that section, that column's telling me some of them are up, some of them are neutral in the last 10 days. So they're still rallying in an uptrend. Again, they're not below the 20 periods, they're not below the 50, uh, but none of them are down 10% in the last 10 days. The next column just looks at the last three days. So I don't really need to look at that. Um, the, the, the ones that are below are here, where we've got the uh, prices below the 20 period moving average in that uptrend, I can also see, well, as a percentage, are they also down 10% in 10 days? Now, some of them might be 4%, 3%. Uh, we've got one of them here, right there. I'm just highlighting the row. It's down 11% in 11 days, and it's below the 20 period moving average. And over on the right here, it's been up 77% in the last 60 days. Oh, that's interesting. It's, it's doing a good, a good trending move. Now, while it's down 10%, I'm just highlighting the column that I'm looking at. I'm just, while it's down 11% in 10 days right there, I can look at the column to the right, and I can see that it is up 2% in the last three days. So it's starting to potentially turn around. Does that make sense? So what, I, so what I'm expecting to see, so I'm looking for that trending chart. That's what I'm expecting to see. It's down 10% in 10 days, but now it's starting to resume, potentially resume the uptrend. It's up uh, 3% in the last three days. Now, the number doesn't matter at this point, but it might suggest that, well, that retracement could be over. Maybe I should go and look at that one first. Let's go and take a look. So this process takes longer to explain than to actually do. But let me just put, before you actually go and look at the chart, pop a comment in the, uh, the chat box. Let me know if it makes sense. Let me know if you've got any questions. And that is a code for it means that I can just take a quick drink of water while you're doing that. But we all clear. Does that resonate? Does it ring true? Are we all on the same page? Uh, all the other metaphors for, <laughs> do you get it? <laughs> awesome, Duncan. Awesome. Cheers, Rodrigo. <clears throat> awesome. <clears throat> well, let's go and do it. That's what we're expecting to see. We're expecting to see that something that looks like that section of the charts right there. That's what we're expecting to see when we go and look at HFC. Well, let's go and do it. So keep Twitter in mind because when we before we do that, before I press it, we, the question that we're going to be asking is, does it look like Twitter? Yes or no? Again, we're, we've got our model uh, idea in mind and we're asking ourselves, does it look like Twitter? 
does it look like Twitter? So let's throw that question open. Does it look like Twitter? Does it more specifically, does it look like that early stage trend that we were looking at on Twitter? There's the average price crossing over. So while I'm marking up the chart so it's easy for you guys and girls to see, uh, let me know, does it look like Twitter? What do you think? So there's our average price crossing over. So average price crossing over, check. We did all of this in, in the watch list over here. I'm just reaffirming the average price has crossed over. We've been in that trend for at least 40 days. How do you know? How do you know that, Phil? These dotted gray grids, that's one month there, that's two months. So I can see easily just because I've got a grid on my chart. So it's in for about 20 days or two months, uh, sorry, 40 days or two months, 20 trading days in a month, folks. Take the weekends out. It works out. The numbers make sense. Average price going up in trend for 40 days. It's up uh, to do specifically 77% in the last 60 days. So one, two, three, four. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, two, four, six. So from about here, it's up 77% in the last seven a uh, few days. Great. Now, now I'm looking at it. Visual to mechanical scan. Stage one done. Visual confirmation. Now we're looking at it. Now we're looking at it. Is it actually doing what we expect? Yeah. Visually, we can see it's going up. Bam. Perfect. Measuring from the high there. Is it down? It's below the 20. Didn't get below the 50, but it's certainly down 10, but it's down 11% in the last 10 days. Fabulous. So we've got a deep retracement is what we're looking for. We've got a deep retracement. Now it's also starting to kick back, move higher. So it's up a little bit. This is why we're looking at it. It's up 3% in the last three days. So it's starting to move high. It's still not like, do we need to worry about an entry? It's a little bit beyond our uh, scope today. We could just basically say, if it goes back above the, the 20 period move on average, I'm certainly gonna be bullish. Again, there's other ways to get in. I've got nine different entry patterns. Again, we're not focusing on step three of the production line today. We're just doing step one, find something to trade with a mechanical scan. Step two, visual confirmation. Is it worth exploring? Step three, on our production line would be, okay, look for an entry. It's not today. I don't need to worry about it. We're swing trading. Like we can come back tomorrow, but certainly if we go above the, the, the 20 period move on average, I would want to be bullish. That's, that's my line in the sand. Let me pause there, folks. How we, do you think that was easy from the point of view? Of, there was nothing complex with it, was there? There's a long list of things to check. It's, well, when I say long, there's only four things to check. It takes longer to explain than to do. And we spent more time thinking about what am I looking for? And the reality is when we went and looked for it, it was easy to find, easy to find. I'm looking for those stocks in this area here. And of those stocks, there's only one that needs my attention today. I could go and look at some of the others, could certainly go and check things out, but it's not time intensive to go and look at 10 stocks. And if you wanted to look at all of them, 40 stocks, it should take you 10, 15 minutes. In fact, I'll give you a quick illustration. If you wanted to look at all of these, we're asking, because we know what we're looking for, does it look like Twitter? Yes or no? Does it look, well, that, to be fair, now I've said that, AAL, AAL. Average price crossed over. It's been in a trend. Visually, it's going up. We, we saw that retracement below the 20. And today, it's just above the 20. So that's our criteria. We're looking to buy the dip in an uptrend. So I would never have done that. It's in fairness, you would have picked it up yesterday. It's just today because we're doing this, the scan brand new. Um, but yeah, we what does it look like Twitter? Yeah, AFL looks like Twitter. Cool. BAC, does it look like well, when the data loads? Come on. Does it look like Twitter? Yep, certainly does. BAC, does it look like Twitter? Yep, definitely does. But we should be able to go through the stocks very quickly. Does it look like Twitter? Does it look like Twitter? And when we find one that's not, that kind of meets our mechanical criteria, but yet doesn't look like the picture on the box, it doesn't. Now, now let me just go back one actually. So, tap 
it checks the boxes, doesn't it? It's got the average price. It looks like it's going up. It's been in a trend, but certainly for the last two months, it's just flat lines, flat line. Now, it doesn't mean we can't trade it. There's other ways to trade this, but it's not looking like Twitter for the moment. So maybe I just remove it and put it somewhere else on my watch list so that I don't have to worry about how to trade this. I'm looking for, does it look like Twitter? Does it look like Twitter? And if yes, then I can start thinking about trade. Now, all of these stocks, all of these, because of the filtering that we just did, it took longer to do. We took 250, 300 stocks um, and we filtered them down mechanically so that we didn't have to do what I'm doing right now, which is to look at every chart every day. But because I've done the filtering, if I did want to look at these 50 stocks, uh, 40 or so stocks, um, then I'm expecting them to look like the label Twitter, <laughs> do they look like Twitter is what I'm trying to evaluate. And so far, they're all meeting that requirement, the visual inspection. Yeah, they all look great. They all look pretty decent. They're all retracing in the context of an uptrend, an early stage trend. So there's no reason in my mind not to remove them from this uh, shorter watch list. This, uh, you know, maybe we've got to trade on these uh, sometime soon. I'm just going back to Weight Watchers. Weight Watchers, it checks the boxes in trend, average price, it's going up, but it looks a little bit different. Again, it looks a little bit different. So maybe it doesn't quite look exactly like Twitter. It checks the boxes mechanical and the visual inspection. It's kind of going up and notice the wording. I'm not saying it looks like Twitter. It's a statement. Does it look like Twitter? Yes. Does this look like Twitter? It's going up doesn't quite look the same, take it off your list. So this is one that I would remove from that visual inspection. And this is why we have the visual inspection. Like we could probably do something with it in fairness. We've got nine different versions of the pattern, uh, the entry uh, mechanism that we use, but I'm looking just for the moment, does this trade look like Twitter? That's my footprint, that's the blueprints. That's the, the model of perfection that I'm looking for. Now this for me, uh, canopy growth, this looks like, again, a little bit different. It's been flat. One, the, the thing that kind of puts me off is it was very steady trend here. And then you've got this exponential growth. And if we think about the dates, it might have just been a part of the, the meme nonsense, the, the GameStop and the all the other bullshit that was going on at the time. So it's a little bit, um, not bubblish. It's like the industry itself, it's got, if you'll pardon the pun, it's got growth potential. Um, but just that, he just got caught up in a little bit of nonsense. So reason why I'm saying that is it's probably going to move sideways first. So I'm not worried about it so far. Does it look like Twitter? It just moved too far, too fast. And this is the voice of experience more than anything. So that's what it looks like. If it, if it looks like Twitter, but it's gone too far, too fast. Again, not quite a bubble. It just got caught up with the excitement. I'm less excited about this stock. I'm not going to remove it from the list. I'm just going to be cautious because of it. Again, we just go, it seems we've gone through um, uh, pretty much all of them. Might as well just go through the last few. Again, uh, NOV, as I'm doing that, uh, energy uh, stock, doesn't quite look the same as Twitter. Um, NRG, uh, also called energy, doesn't quite look like Twitter. So I can probably remove that from my, um, you know, get excited list. Uh, RAD doesn't quite look like Twitter for the same reasons. Uh, RDS, Royal Dutch, Again, that looks fine. Okay. And the last one, work. Uh, now, this definitely, 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 definitely checks the boxes, but it does not look like Twitter. It's just flat as a pancake, flat as a pancake. So let it go. And to be fair, because of all that sh shenanigans, I'm probably going to take that stock off my watch list. I'm just going to uh, put it all the way down here at the bottom. I'll keep an eye on it. Maybe I'll put it back on, but I'm certainly not going to stress about that stock um, for the next several months because it looks like a bag of nails. Right, so we've looked at 40 stocks. We've taken maybe five of them off the universe. We've got several candidates that look really interesting um, and they were relatively easy to find. The one that looks like it needs, uh, that may be uh, looking good is HFC. We also took a little look at um, at UAL, that could be interesting. So keep an eye, oh, sorry, AAL. Uh, so Airlines Group, 
So other things that you could do because you've got, uh, oh, I know the name of this one. It's American Airlines. Maybe you want to go and check out the sector. Go and check out the UALs, uh, American Airlines. Uh, you can go and check out BA. You know, you can start to uh, follow Alice down the rabbit hole and just say, okay, maybe there's three or four stocks that are in the, the sector as a whole that might be worth exploring. So that's just another way that you can kind of expand the universe of stocks that you have. Oh, I, I recognize them, American Airlines. Okay, let's go and explore the um, the airline stocks. Maybe they're, they're all, if you'll pardon the pun, no, it's not intentional, but um, maybe they're all about to take off. But that's how we can find stocks to swing trade that makes the most sense. How'd you like that, folks? Everyone happy? two or three stocks to look at. What I'll do is I'll post this list of stocks in the uh, do, do, do Slack group. So I've got a little community, my little corner of the universe, my little corner of the world. This is Slack. You can go to antivest.com forward slash Slack. You'll have to register. It's not... Um, it's just a, a communication tool that I use. We've got a little bit of general chat and stuff, but I'm going to post that here and uh, you'll be able to uh, have a copy of these stocks that we were looking at today. There's about 40 of them. They're all in a trending state. So if you want to go to any of the emails that you receive from me, uh, scroll down near the bottom somewhere, there'll be a link to uh, my uh, my little corner of the world. And again, it's antiavestor.com forward slash Slack. Do, 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 spell Slack right first. I'll pop this in the chat box, actually. So if you want to go there, it is, it's going to be posted there shortly. I'll post a replay there as well. And you can have that with my love. So folks, that was finding stocks super fast. It takes longer to explain than to do. You saw that we were able to zero in on quite literally one stock that looks great today. And we found two or three that look really interesting that might need something doing on them today or uh, early next week. But there's a small number of stocks that make uh, great sense. Uh, as always, uh, I do have uh, an offer for if you need further help. There's no pressure with it. If you want more help and you think that I'm the person to help you, uh, if you'd like help finding your perfect trade or perfect uh, day trade or swing trade, and you want to learn in the smartest possible way without stressing over whether the market's going up or down, you should be able to profit from up and down moves in the markets. As you've just seen, you're never going to be spending hours flicking through chart after chart. You're just going to be able to zoom in on hopefully the perfect trade or the perfect stock today, whether we're day trading or swing trading. We have the same process for profiting at the open. Uh, but we want to focus on the best stocks, the best times. There's uh, basically one simple process that you've just seen illustrated. We've got full trade management, TTE trade management system, which is the real secret to all success. And basically, you should be able to pick this up quick. I mean, I refer to this regularly as a production line. I want it for me first. Like, I want to know what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, and why I'm doing it. So it turns out that, like, it, it's easy for you to replicate and if you want help to build your trade confidence so that you can transition to the best possible trader that you can be, then send me a message. Like, I don't know if what I do is right for you. But if you want some help with swing trading, simply go to theperfectswingtrade.com. And if you need help with day trading, you can go to theperfectdaytrade.com. Choose your own adventure. Alternatively, you can go directly to the website. If you are brand new and you need to know what a chart is and what all those things that Phil was talking about earlier, go to I Need Basics. Uh, you'll be taken to the same place with I Need Day Trading. And if you want help with swing trading, which is what we focused on today, um, then simply choose your own adventure. This is on the homepage. It's at antivesta.com. Uh, and that's it. So if you want to uh, swing trading, the perfect swing trade.com uh, or day trade, the perfect day trade.com, choose your own adventure. That's my shameless plug, folks. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, while you've got me, if you've got any questions or comments or observations, please feel free to pop them in the chat box. I'll be around for the next five to 10 minutes answering a few questions that have not yet answered. Um, so if you've got a question, now's the time. Failing that, I shall see you all bright and early next week at the same time for the next exciting adventure of finding stocks to trade that make the most sense for you today.